Well, one of the first metal gigs I saw was actually Cannibal Corpse and Damaged and a Bremelin, and it was back in the early 90s at the Palace in Melbourne. And I was probably about 13 or 14, and, and it was, uh, I was. Hor- like I was really scared to go in there like there's all these kids like they were obviously a little bit older than me at the time I was one of the young ones there and <laughs> well, bright eyed and yeah, bushy tail yeah with me <laughs> black metal t-shirt on or something and everyone was sort of getting in there and it was it was actually a really uh, awesome gig and so many people that I actually know now were at that gig and um, what I do remember I mean other than the bands being really awesome and it was the first time I'd seen uh, extreme metal in a live environment was um, was uh, me stage diving during Cannibal Corpse not getting caught and ripping the uh, skin off my knee which I still have the scar of today I can show you that's right there so, see that scar that's from Cannibal Corpse when I was like about 13 or 14 so you spent your whole life like trying to make up for that yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, pretty much. People pretty are much. catching now, don't they? The they people do catching. now, yeah, yeah. I, it's changed. Yeah. 20 years. Ex- yeah. Exactly. It's taken a lot of practice. But, um, and Didn't then, you go see Poison when you were a kid? Oh, yeah. well, that's not in my top gigs, though. So, but it was something. Mm. It was the beginning. Yeah. Not, I, saw, it, I did see, I don't know if they can... We'll just put that in there anyway, but... Put that in there. Poison, yeah, I saw Poison when I was about, in, I think maybe in grade two or grade three, and that was actually my... Seven. Place. Yeah, I had, a, I had a denim jacket with poison open up and say R on the back. Yeah, I had that. Um, and I don't really remember much about that at all, although I did have a big cardboard banner that said, po- you know, was, we painted poison on it and I was holding it up. And like, we were sta- like m- miles back at the, the Rod Laver Arena in Melbourne, which is a huge tennis centre, and, and I was standing there holding this cardboard sign and... I don't know why I was holding it. I don't know why people even do that. It was, uh, but um, I remember. It's not like anyone's going to acknowledge, yeah. I think Roxas supported. Do you remember Roxas? <laughs> yeah, they supported. So that was that was something that happened. Certainly not in my top six. It was a gateway drug. It was, yeah. but it's in there anyway now. Yeah. And then I reckon um, when I uh, saw Pantera back in the back in 94 that was a pretty amazing experience at festival hall in melbourne we were i was still pretty young then as well and and was i went and uh washed cars and stuff to earn them earn the money to get to buy the ticket and uh and i just remember the buzz for it just being so huge because not only was I sort of just a, a young whippersnapper, but um, I just, you know, seeing people with their panel vans, you know, like, and then they had Pantera on the back thing, and everyone oh, was man, so... Man, Australia e- fucking loved Pantera. Everyone was yeah. so excited for it, and it was yeah. just a killer show, and and uh, really sort of um, made me, like, really sort of fall for metal stuff. Can you remember the first time you arrived here and what you kind of dreamed about Australia before you got here? Or? Our uh, manager... Uh, at the time when I was in Pantera, I said, hey, uh, you know, your record just went gold in Australia and, and they want you guys to come tour down there. We're like, Australia, where's that? When we came down here, you know, it was incredible, man. I mean, it was like the Beatles. I mean, it was insane. You know, we would pull into the airport and there would be, you know, a thousand people there waiting on us, you know. And so then I saw Slayer like about a year after that and that was sort of uh, another... Um game changer for me because it, it, it was like the Pantera gig but it was like and at the same venue but it was uh much more violent <laughs> and I remember did you get hit punched uh, in the yeah, face I got kicked in the head with a Doc Martin boot I think and had some blood coming down so I looked yeah. apart and everything I think people in general think they have to grow up and by growing up change your musical taste mm. um I mean I've Aside from changing my look and looking like a convict, you know, I've, I've pretty much been the same dude for 30 years, making, you know, the same kind of music. And I, I like it, you know, I, I'm a, still a metal kid. You look at my iPod, you won't be surprised at what's in there. I went to um, Download back in 2005 at Donington, and I saw the original Sabbath lineup with, when Bill Ward was still playing, and, and that was a really amazing experience. Um, watching uh, watching them at that sort of legendary place where they were, uh, you know, where they, you know, so many legends have been forged in the metal, um, <laughs> and it, you know, Sabbath came out and they opened with uh, War Pigs, I think, and and it, it was just started to rain as soon as they came on stage, and I was sitting there going, I can't believe I watched a Black Sabbath. <laughs> 
and it was cool. But uh, you know, it, it was a really great set. But uh, what, the one thing that does stand out for me on that day was um, uh, the Dwarves played. And they played like, when I walked over the hill and came up to where you could see the band, the Dwarves were playing and doing their thing. And, and uh, the, whole, the crowd was just like throwing bottles at them. And like the whole crowd was, the stage was littered in bottles. And, uh, and then they just wouldn't stop playing. And they were like playing and, play, and they just wouldn't stop. And the, they, they just shut the PA down on them. And then they just destroyed everything. So, yeah. <laughs> That was cool. So that was a good. That was a good day. I would say probably that Sabbath one at download was number one. But yeah. I really what Australian band. Australian band. Well, well, obviously. I mean, there's obviously there's ACDC that I've seen a bunch of times, and all those shows are great. A few people have said you sound like uh, Brian Johnson with his nuts in a vice, <laughs> and uh, I was like, that's that's a compliment. Yeah. That's, you know, I was like, okay. of sorts. <laughs> How tight was the, the the vice, you know? You played in a lot of bands. Why is King Parrot different? Why did it work this time? Why is it like the thing? Because I know you've been kind of giving some advice and stuff. It's, there's a lot of different reasons probably. And uh, there's, I think, probably the makeup of the the band, the characters in the band, the people in the band is is a certainly a, a big part of it. Um, the work ethic that everyone brings to the table and the, the commitment and the ability to get up and go. Which is which is something that holds a lot of bands back. I know for a fact because peop- a lot of people get uh, very uh, adult, or well, yeah, yeah adult. I, I wouldn't say it's adult because I think being courageous enough to uh, get up and go and, and leave your life behind for an extended period is is um, something not to be scoffed at. You know, not at all. No, I think it's it, it takes a, a certain kind of. Uh, person whether I mean whether that makes you better or worse or whatever it just means that you you're prepared to do that and I, I love uh, that the, the, the travel element for me is uh, really important and I think uh, the other guys in King Parrot will, uh, will would agree that we just love being able to you know we've made so many great friends now from traveling and and we've been to so many awesome places and and the great thing about that is and, and continuing to tour is we get to go back and see it all, all the time yeah. i guess probably the other element that we've sort of done better than what we've done in, in previous bands that we've all played in is just the business side of it yeah. and stuff and and try to do you run that really, stuff yeah I, I do that and we we have a management company in uh, new york as well that awesome. um we work with so yeah i, I work really closely with them and and we sort of just get the job done and since the sort of decline of CD sales and things like that, you've got to sort of try and be creative with, with new uh, ideas and merch is, merch is the thing that uh, people get into now. So yeah. that's really cool and, and we have fun doing that and we also have fun doing our videos and everything. So hopefully we're going to get another one done this year from, from the Dead Set album, which would be, which would be cool. Which song? Uh, I don't know yet. We're still deciding and uh, still just talking with our video guy about some concepts and things like that. Yeah. But hopefully that'll happen soon. What was it like kind of sharing the stage with Max Cavalier and stuff on there? Oh, no, it was... Yeah. It was it, yeah. yeah. Uh, awesome. Yeah, we got, we got up and did uh, Ace of Spades with him pretty much every night on the tour. And um, even on one of the nights, uh, Max's brother Igor was there and, and he played Roots and then he stayed on stage and did the Ace of Spades. And I was like... Am I on stage with the Cavalier Brothers right now in London to a sold out audience? Yes, yeah. that's happening. Yeah, that's ha- <laughs> that is happening. Did yep. you envision all this when you were a kid? Um, perhaps. Maybe I did. Yeah, I must have. I think I must have. I reckon you got to be able to see it in your head before it happens. Oh, I'm a firm believer in this. Yeah, I think, you know, you sort of manifest your own reality yeah. in, in a, in, to a certain degree. And if you want it to happen bad enough, then I guess some, some of these things tend to happen there's a lot of broken spirits out there i think sometimes mm. and you should just go do the thing you love the most go, yeah. go do it every day and yeah. you'll you'll be shit and then you'll get better and then it'll be awesome and then you can look back when you're dead and go that was sick and even if you die on the way to doing it yeah. you'll be dead so it doesn't matter you'll, like a blaze, you'll <laughs> die you'll go out in a blaze of glory you yeah. can join the entire arsenal of um rock stars who are now like prince man that's yeah. that's messed up Let's see what he's gonna do. Like, mm. and he was like a crazy, yeah. He was a 
he was a crazy awesome dude yeah and i think that's, that's sort of with, with music and stuff i think you probably see like the more the more eccentric and out there people are the ones that kind of get out there and do their thing it's mm. It's uh, it's funny how it works. It was, I mean, I was even watching uh, Black Sabbath the other night when they when they played their uh, last show down in uh, Melbourne, and just watching Ozzy do his thing. It's like, I mean, his voice is obviously totally amazing, yeah. and but just the way this, this whole stage presence and everything is just. What? And I just saw I saw him and Tony looking at each other, like, and just Tony was just laughing his head off. And I love them; they're so great. They're yeah. just great. They're just great. And they're like, you know, and they don't mess yeah. around. They fucking practice, you know. Like, yeah, that were, yeah, they, it, re- it was a really good show. And but it just watching him like, like Tony laugh at Ozzy and Ozzy just doing it, you know, with his arms flopping around, and he's just awesome. It was yeah. so cool and and just amazing to see guys of that, um, you know, that age still getting up there and having a ball and, yeah. and I guess that's sort of all you can uh, hope for in yeah. life isn't it just really? be Black Sabbath yeah. the only the best thing to do in life is to be Black Sabbath because they're the mm-hmm. dark riff overlords of all music that matters mm-hmm. that, I'm not going to uh, yeah. disagree I don't know whether either. we can go from there yeah. no, 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 I think, I think we're stop. done that's it <laughs> this is Matt Young this is The Void I'm Christina thank Bye. you